Picture eroded riverbanks, struggling vegetation, and a park ecosystem out of balance. It might seem hard to believe, but just 30 years ago, this was the reality in Yellowstone National Park. But in 1995, something remarkable happened that changed the park forever. Wolves once thrived in Yellowstone, as they had for thousands of years. But as settlers pushed west and ranching expanded, wolves came into conflict with livestock. They were hunted, trapped, and poisoned. By 1926, the last wolf pack had been killed in Yellowstone. And the wolves' disappearance had a profound impact on the ecosystem. Elk populations surged without their main predator. They overgrazed willows, aspens, and cottonwoods. Without those trees, beaver populations declined, and the diversity of bird species plummeted. The intricate web of life in Yellowstone was unraveling. But the tide began to turn in 1974, when the gray wolf was listed as an endangered species. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service was mandated to recover wolf populations. But the path to reintroduction in Yellowstone wasn't easy. Ranchers opposed the idea, fearing wolves would prey on their livestock. Funding was hard to come by, and logistics were challenging. It took until 1995 and 1996 for a small group of wolves from Canada to be captured and released in Yellowstone. It was a historic moment, the return of a species that had been absent for 70 years. But before we talk about the impact of reintroducing wolves, I just want to let you know that we're on the road to 5,000 subscribers. And it would mean a lot if you could hit the subscribe button and like the video if you want more content about conservation and environmental stories every single week. So the wolves' impact was immediate and profound. They began to hunt the elk, which had become sedentary and complacent in the wolves' absence. Elk numbers dropped from a high of nearly 20,000 to less than 10,000. But more importantly, the wolves changed the elk's behavior. Elk started moving more and browsing less intensively in a single area. And they avoided places like valleys and gorges where they could be easily ambushed. This behavioral shift gave the park's vegetation a chance to recover. Willow, aspen, and cottonwood seedlings could grow without being immediately grazed down. As the trees grew taller, birds returned to nest in them and beavers used them to build their dams. So ecologists have a term for this, a trophic cascade. It's where the addition or removal of a top predator triggers a cascade of changes through the entire food web. In Yellowstone, the wolves' return didn't just affect the elk, it rippled to influence the park's rivers, forests, and even its soil. With more trees holding the banks together, the rivers started to meander less, their waters ran clearer. Beavers thrived in this new landscape, their dams creating ponds and wetlands that hosted a diversity of life from fish to amphibians to even otters. The wolves also left a larger share of elk carcasses on the landscape, providing a bounty for scavengers like bears, eagles, ravens, and coyotes. But the wolves' recovery isn't secure yet. They still face threats, particularly when they roam outside of Yellowstone's borders. Wolves have been shot, mistaken for coyotes, or seen as a threat to livestock. In 2018, the U.S. Congress rolled back protections for wolves, making it easier for states to allow hunting. If too many wolves are killed, it could undo the delicate balance that has been restored in Yellowstone. This is why the story of Yellowstone's wolves matters. It's not just about one park or one species, it's about recognizing the complex web of life that sustains our landscapes and our role in either unraveling or protecting that web. When we protect apex predators like wolves, we give ecosystems a chance to heal and thrive. Yellowstone's story is one of hope and resilience, a reminder of nature's ability to bounce back if we give it a chance. And I encourage you all to consider how you could be an advocate for wildlife and wild places, whether it's supporting conservation policies, educating others about the importance of biodiversity, or experiencing the wonder of nature firsthand. Every action matters. Together, we can ensure that places like Yellowstone and other national parks and wild places are here for generations to come. Mm -hmm.